Hello, my name is David Andelfato. I'm in the research division here at the St. Louis Fed, and I'm interviewing uh, presenters at the St. Louis Advances in Research Conference that's held this spring in 2016. With me this morning is David Berger of Northwestern University. David has graciously uh, agreed to sit down and, and speak to us about his research, his paper that he will be presenting, which is called House Prices and Consumer Spending. Welcome, David. Thank you. Welcome. It's a Why pleasure don't you to tell us a little bit about your paper? What, what is this all about? Housing prices and consumer spending. Well, you know, kind of everything is in the title, but uh, <laughs> hopefully I'll convince you it's a little more subtle than that. But the basic idea is there is, you know, a widespread consensus that there's a connection between changes in housing prices and changes in consumption. So for example, in over the 2000s, we saw a large run up in housing prices and then a large collapse in housing prices. And during the recession, we saw non-durable consumption fall a lot, like that sort of everyday spending for people. And recently, you know, so lots of policymakers have been concerned about this because, you know, as you said, we saw such a big protracted decline in consumption. And, you know, recently there's been a lot of empirical work documenting this connection that there, you know, this what I'll call a housing wealth elasticity, that when housing prices change by 1%, consumption changes by a little bit. Um, but it's actually a little bit of a puzzle. So we got started because, you know, there's all this empirical work documenting this correlation, but it's a little bit hard to understand theoretically what's going on. And the reason why it's a little more subtle than you might expect is that imagine you're a homeowner and housing prices go up. So you, you know, naturally you might think, oh, I'm wealthier, right? But think about how you would actually access that wealth. So if you went and sold the house, um, you'd have to buy, you, you know, you still have to live somewhere. So you have to go rent or buy a house. But if housing prices go up everywhere by the same amount, you know, if you want to buy the same size house, you actually don't have any more, or you don't have any more money than you would otherwise. And so as a result, it's actually kind of hard theoretically to come up with uh, stories for why a change in housing prices would actually lead into a change in consumption. Do you mind if I inter interject for a moment? What about, uh, you know, the story about using your home as a an ATM, the accessing these home li lines of credit? So you wouldn't have to explicitly sell your home, you, but presumably uh, the bank might extend a greater credit limit. No, exactly. Yeah. So I was just saying this, this sort of simple logic I was yeah. detailing is, you know, very powerful to economists, but, you know, for the real world person, obviously they can think you can take home equity line of credits, right. you can borrow against the value of your house. So exactly. So what we do is we consider a more enriched environment where, you know, we, we take into account that you might lose your job and that you can, you can borrow against the value of your house. Okay. And once you do that, you can get these much bigger numbers. You can match sort of the empirical evidence. That's okay. sort of the basic of the paper, the basis of the paper. Okay. So... But I mean, this idea that uh, uh, as home prices go up, permitting you to uh, expand your home equity loan uh, mm -hmm. and increase your consumption, I mean, this is not surprising though, is it? Or, or So to answer this question, we sort of derive a simple, what I call sufficient statistic result, which is that we show that the overall response of consumption to a change in housing prices is equal to the marginal propensity to consume. So in non-jargon, if I gave you a dollar, how much of it would you spend? Mm -hmm. Times the value of your house. Okay. Now, you may think this is totally obvious, but actually it's a little bit subtle because housing prices, when a house prices change, they affect lots of things. So they affect your current wealth because if you're a homeowner, your house goes up. They change relative prices. So if housing is more expensive, maybe I want to spend less on bagels. Um, they affect your ability to borrow through this collateral constraint. As you said, if you know my house price goes up, I can borrow more. And so housing prices affect lots of things, mm -hmm. and yet, you can summarize the total response as just, you know, if I gave you a dollar of housing wealth, how much would I spend? Okay. And is, is, is the purpose of your paper uh, not so much uh, the qualitative finding, but trying to put a, a number on that magnitude? Exactly. So yeah. we're both trying to understand the mechanism. So as yeah. I said, there's like four, we think of four different effects that go on when housing prices change. Mm -hmm. So what I would call an endowment effect, if I own a house, I feel wealthier. But there's also this sort of income effect, which is that, you know, in the future, I'm a poor because if I decide to buy another house, you know, the housing prices have gone up. Nice. There's also, you know, this effect where on what we call a substitution effect, which is that if housing prices go up, I move, I want to buy, you know, if housing prices go up, I want to buy more of non-housing stuff. And then there's also this collateral effect. And then the idea is sort of to take these, these channels and we show that the overall effect, it's sort of we're giving guidance to what people should measure. The overall effect can be determined by this endowment effect. However, that doesn't mean you're exactly right. This collateral effect is very, very powerful. Okay. 
So do you, so this is primarily a theoretical exercise, or are you matching up to the recent recession in the United States data, or are you looking at many countries? So we're, it's a, it's a, okay, so the first part is just sort of understanding the mechanisms, okay. but then we put numbers on it and try, as we said, we're, we're ultimately guided by these empirical studies that have found that these, the response of consumption, as you said, it seems obvious to the everyday person, but it's hard from you know, a theoretical <laughs> egghead like me, is that the, these numbers are quite big. Okay. But if you take a simple model, they're actually not big. I see. So in terms of uh, uh, what sort of conclusions that a policymaker might take away from your findings, do you think there's something that uh, should alert, say, people at the Fed or something, or perhaps even broader in the fiscal fear? Oh, I think there's definitely. So mm -hmm. there's two, two, two things. So one thing is there's no such thing, you know, this isn't, you know, physics where there's these immutable constants. I know they change a little bit sometimes, but like, it, so this housing wealth effect. So I said it's determined by the, the sort of the, the combination of how much housing you have and how much you would spend if I gave you an additional dollar. Okay. So that number changes over time. And it really depends on exactly like how much debt you've taken on. So for example, if you met, we, we would hypothesize, our theory tells us we measured this in the 80s where people hadn't taken on a lot of mortgage debt, you would find a much smaller consumption response mm -hmm. than if you had you know, measured it in 2008 sure. after there had been a long run up, a long housing boom fueled, full, like fueled by borrowing. Um, and so what that means is, the second thing is that Anything that you might think that might affect these two variables, the marginal propensity to consume or amount of housing, say, for example, lowering of down payment requirements, which allows people to borrow more against the value of their house, mm -hmm. so they're more susceptible to negative shocks, so they would have a bigger consumption response, is something that like the Fed should be paying attention to. Because it means that when housing prices fall, or if they fall, then you know, consumers are going to suffer a much larger decline in their net worth and therefore are going to cut back on consumption much more. Very good. Thank you very much, David. That's very interesting. All right.